guys, Scout Eric, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be continuing on the Chess Merit Badge. So today, I'm going to be showing you some key points and the opening principles. First, I have a question. Is it possible to win a chess game in two or four moves? The answer is yes. Now, let me show you the opening principles. So, some do's and some don'ts. So first, you want to do the opening phase in either four to six moves, because that can be crucial on how the game is played. So first, my first tip is that when playing, you want to try and control the centerpiece, which is a 4x4 four four square. If you control this, it will make it easier for you to attack opponents, and your opponents will make it harder for them to attack you. So first, you want, you want to move your bishop and your knight first, because they're the minor pieces. Then you want to move your major pieces, which is your queen and your rook. One of your first very moves for the knight is you want to move him to the center of the board. Then, after that, you want to be, your bishop's first move is you want him to be on the other side attacking. So, first, what we need to do is we need to move the pawn in front of the king up one, so that the bishop is able to get out. For the knight is you want to move him to the center of the board the pawn in front of the king up one, so that the bishop is able to get out. So those are the do's that you want to do. Now I'm going to be showing you the don'ts. What you want to, the don'ts that you don't want to do is you don't want to move your bishop to block the pawns in front of your king or the queen. So back to what I was saying, if you move this guy right here in the center of the board, and then you move this guy up one. You don't want to move your bishop to block the one in front of the queen. Then, your second don't is you don't want to move the knight towards the edge of the board. So, you don't want to move him over here. You want to keep him in the center of the board, which is a 4x4. Four four Hi, how are you doing? Um, squares. You don't want to move the queen early in the game, so you want to keep her right here. You don't want to move her all over the place. Then, you don't want to move your um, pawns in front of your rooks in front so that you can get your rook out early in the game because the rooks are actually useful, useless in the beginning. Then, your last don't is you don't want to move a piece continuously. So, if I start out the game by moving this pawn, I don't want to con just continue moving him forward. Advanced players normally move pieces at least three pieces three times before they actually move this one piece the second time. So those are some do's and some don'ts. So now I'm going to be showing you some tips. So first, you want to do your opening principles in four to six moves, because it can be crucial on how the game is played. How I said, the knight moves here, he, the pawn moves there, and the bishop is moved over here. Then, castling, it is a very important piece of the game. It is when the king is able to, the rook is able to jump the king and he's put into hiding. So first how you do it is he's only able to move two squares over. Then the rook is able to jump him and he's safe. One, he, he's only able to, he can't do this if there's three things. If he's being put into check, if he's in check, or if, let's say the queen kills him right here, then he's not able to, because if he moves, then he's not, he's in, he'll be in check. Then, my third trick is the pawn structure. So your pawns are your first line of defense, and you don't want to move them too far so that an enemy is able to get behind. The pawns are the first line of defense, so for the three that are defending the king, you don't want to move them because they're the protection for him. Same that goes with the queen if you castling her. Well, my last tip is that you want to, you don't want to keep trading pawns, so you don't want to keep just killing the pawns off because they will be important for the end game when you are able to make them to the other side and turn them into queens. If you ignore these opening principles, you will become an easy prey known as the Scholar's Mate or the Fool's Mate. Remember my first question? Is it, is it possible to win a game or lose a game in four moves? Well, the answer is yes. And if you're 
If you're just starting out playing chess, and a more experienced player may be able to lead you into the trap known as the Fool's Mate or the Scholar's Mate. And I'm going to be showing you those moves. So first, you want to take this pawn and move him up two. Then, the opposing team moves this pawn and moves him up one. Then, in your response, you take this pawn and move him up one. Then, you're able to take the queen, move her all the way over, and your king's in check. And he's not able to move forward because he'll still be in check. So, that's the, that's the fool's mate. Now, I'm going to be showing you the scholar's mate. There's two ways you can do this. So first, you want to take the pawn that's in front of the king and move him up two. Then the black moves up two to face off with him. Then, her, their next move is to take the queen and move her all the way over here. Then, in response, the white team takes the horse and hopefully tries to put her in to kill her. But that's a deceptive tactic. Then, the bishop moves all the way over here. Then, he tries to take the horse and put him over there. Then, the king is able to go and kill this pawn. And the put queen. Yeah, the queen puts the king in check. But the reason why the king can't kill her back is bec is because of this. If the king kills the if the king kills the queen, then the bishop will just kill him. So that's just that's one method. Now we're going to show you the second method. It's basically the same as the first, but in a different order. You still take the pawn and move him up here. The other pawn comes to face him. Then you move the bishop all the way over here, and the knight moves over here to face him. Then, you take the queen and move her all the way over here. Then, the knight moves over here, and the queen is able to take out the pawn and put the king in check. So there are a couple um, places where you can actually defend against the white team on the scholar's mate. So, it's put into the same place, but instead of the horse moving here, instead of the horse moving here, he can move over here. So that way, if the queen kills this pawn right here, then the knight is able to kill her. Then, the second way is that a pawn can move here, so that if she kills the pawn, then this pawn can kill her. Then, the last move is with the queen. The queen can either move here, so if she tries to kill this pawn, the queen is able to kill her. Or she can move here, which is the same thing. She kills the pawn, the queen kills her. So that's a way to tackle the problem of the scholar's mate. All of, the, all of these moves I just showed you were against the opening principles in the first of four to six moves. Now I'm going to show you the mid game. So these strategies are used in the middle game. For, what force means in chess is whoever has the most players has the most force. So in this case, blue has ten players on the board, while gold has six. So that means blue has more force. And whoever has more force has the ability to simplify the game by trading in kills. So, the, the gold, if the gold kills the blue, then the king is able to kill him, trading one for one. The king's safety means where you put the king to a safe spot where he's not being harmed. So in this case, the king is being protected by three pawns and a bishop. The safest spot for the king to be is in a castle position. Where, three, where he's behind a line of pawns. The pawns can either protect themselves or someone. As you can see, the pawns are protecting the king. And in this spot, this is called a pawn chain. So if one enemy kills this pawn, then the, the pawn can kill him. Then we'll be talking about space. So space is whoever has the most forces in one area. So right now, the gold team ones because they have the more, most force in this area. And now I'll be talking about tempo. Tempo refers to moves where one piece is forcing the other one to move. So in this case, the queen is forcing the knight to move because or else she'll kill him. Today I'll be showing you a technique called the fork. So first, it's the white team's move. They move their pawn right here, putting the king in check. He can't move here because the bishop will get him, and he can't move here because the king will get him. So his only option is to move here. Then it's the white team's turn. So he moves right here, putting two players at risk. 
the rook, and the king. The king, since he is in check, he is forced to move over here. Then, then the bishop can turn and kill the rook, leaving only the king left. So now I'll be showing you the inner pose. So what you do is you, if somebody places their rook right here and puts the gold, gold's king in check, well, you're actually able to actually block the attack by moving a, a piece blocking the, um, the check while also putting the other kings um, into check. So he's not able to kill the king without killing him, and the king, he put the king in check. So now I'll be explaining the skewer. The skewer is when you're able to kill multiple people in a line. Then after this, we're going to head on to the end game. So the bishop moves over here to put the king in check, but with the knight moves over here to block it. But now um, the bishop takes him out and is forcing the king to move. So the king moves over here. Then the bishop has a direct line a path a path to the queen takes her out taking two figures out and moving the king there's many more strategies that you can learn in your scout book now let's move on to the end game so now we're on to the end game so what you want to do is if you're in the winning team you want to try and sacrifice like the, your queen for the opposing team's queen or like your bishop for their bishop but if you're on the losing team you want to try and sacrifice your pawn for either a knight or a pawn for a rook because you want to get these guys out and keep them safe. Well, this is about the end of this video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. Please like, please subscribe, and also please share. And, and make sure to check out my other videos on the chess mirror about and how I talk about the history and how I made, I molded these figures and made this board. And bye!